happening. Let's pretend we have this opportunity here. We have this child who's going to be born, or the child's already born. Where do we start the story? Of t oh, okay. No, you got to start before that. Okay, so this is what I want to know. Where do we start the story of helping, uh, of, um, I'm going to say the word teaching, but cultivating care? Yes, yes. So, so here's what's frightening. What's frightening is uh, you can uh, do an interview with a non-parent about the nature of his or her attachment relationships as a child. This is before they get their parents. And how they do it in that interview will predict how their unconceived child mm. will fare at, year of, at one year of age on, on attachment experiments. So oh. it, it, it's like almost you don't know where to begin. Because, because then their parents. Because then their parents and so on. So, so, but, but if you're going to start somewhere, yeah. if, if you're going to name a starting point, What's your starting point? Say, I would say you got to start at the first prenatal visit, uh, which should be not just about blood tests and ultrasounds and uh, immunizations and pap smears, but about how you're feeling in life about yourself. How's your relationship with the father of this child? What's happening for you? So that because already the stresses on the woman during pregnancy will have an impact on the child's development. In what way? We, 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 well, in all kinds of ways, neurologically and hormonally and so on, how they handle stress and all that. So if you have to start somewhere, then I'd say start at the first prenatal visit at the very least and start helping that, those parents explore their own emotional states in preparation for being a child into the world. Doesn't that seem like obvious? I mean, wh why don't well, we I mean, as a culture well, just do that? Well, you, you may see it sounds obvious, but nobody in medical no. school talks about it, and no doctor does That's it. it. You know, and That's it, it just doesn't happen. It might happen, but it just doesn't happen. Where would you say? <laughs> I, I'd, I'd like to start uh, from a, a theoretical point yeah. here, first of all, and then bring it back to a practical. Yeah. And, and the theoretical one is, is one of Charles Darwin's observations, which... I think most people missed uh, at that time. I said it was, it, it, it was incredible that humans, that, first of all, we share emotion with all other mammals. Now we know about the limbic system, the emotional brain. And we do share emotion with all other mammals. But humans have the capability of feeling their emotions. And it turns out that feeling our emotions mm -hmm. is very necessary, especially uh, for caring, and we hear so many kids these days say, I don't care, doesn't matter, whatever. These are the same kids that don't say, I miss. These are the same kids who don't say, my feelings got hurt. These are the same th kids that aren't saying, I'm scared, I'm nervous, I'm afraid. These are the same kids that research says to us, I've lost their blush when they're embarrassed. What does that mean? They, they no really longer blush it? when they're embarrassed. They've lost it. In other words, they've lost the tender feelings. The point, the point is here is for us to be able to feel our emotions, the, um, uh, or we could call it a soft heart, being able to feel our emotions, we must not have, come, have become equipped for a wounding environment. And that is exactly what I see happening with children today. It's, it's, not, it, it's not that children haven't learned caring. It's that many of them care deeply at two years of age and three years of age, and they lost their feelings, their tender feelings. And the reason is, and it appears that more and more children are losing their feelings along with losing their caring, their embarrassment, their nervousness, because the, the, it turns out the brain is equipped to to uh, uh, to be able to to defend us against a vulnerability that's too much to bear. So if our feelings are getting hurt too much, the uh, the feelings go back into into emotion, into the unconscious, rather than something that we're aware of. Especially again, the tender feelings that allows us. When I was working with the kids in the in the prison system, it was amazing. 
they could eat and digest their food. They could sleep, many of them like babies. Uh, and they could concentrate. Uh, most of it was how to get out of prison, but they could still concentrate. Uh, when I was there, I couldn't eat. I was sleepless. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't concentrate. I was rattled. They were equipped to function in a wounding environment like many of today's kids are at school, but at a great cost. These kids, when I did my straw research with them, they had 80% less feeling than other kids. They had lost their feelings. And that, to me, is the most significant issue. Not that kids have not been taught to be caring and considerate. It is that we're living in a world where children are losing their feelings. We're so busy trying to figure out what diagnosis they fit in and what the behavior problems and how to shape behavior. We don't even understand uh, that they've, they've, they've lost this capacity that makes us fully human and humane, that we feel. And along with feeling is, is our hurt feelings, our, our, our missing feelings, and they're all part of, of the picture.